All right, fellow fly tires, this is Lance with Fly Fish Food. I want to show you a uh, really cool, really basic, actually, very simple uh, still water pattern. And actually, you can use it in rivers, too, as a streamer. I do that quite a bit. In fact, I caught a bunch of fish on one of our local uh, tailwaters the other day just fishing a, a version of this fly. So this fly is called a humongous. Um, the humongous was first shown to me by, by a buddy of mine from Scotland named Dave Downey. When we went to Scotland for the World Championships, uh, the, one of their most popular flies at the time, and I think still today, was this humongous pattern. And I've basically morphed this type of fly into most of my lake patterns. Uh, by that I mean using a shorter shank or standard shank hook and a fly with a really long tail here, as you'll see in just a second. So uh, rather than tying most of my streamers for lakes, I used to tie them all on like 2x or 3x long hooks. Now I make the same size fly with the tail and everything, same overall size but with a shorter shank and a lot longer marabou tail which gives you a lot more motion in the fly. So without further ado let's do a humongous. So to start I've got a um, fulling mill heavyweight champ hook in the vise. This is a size 10. I do them in 10s and 12s mostly. Uh, these are a deadly barbless hook. Uh, if you're looking for a really strong wired hook that holds fish well this is the one. Then I've got a uh, plummeting tungsten bead in silver or nickel in 3.3 millimeter, one eighth of an inch. Uh, that's on there as well. I'm going to use some UTC 140 in black. And we'll start the thread here right behind the bead and work it back to the bend. So one thing that, uh, one question I get asked about this style fly a lot is don't I get a lot of short strikes? And the answer is no, we really don't get many short strikes, even though I'm going to tie a really long marabou tail. Um, these these flies, for whatever reason, I think because it's mostly tail, um, the fish can suck it in really, really well. Anyhow, so before I get the tail in place, I'm going to use a little bit of flashaboo. This is just silver flashaboo, 6901, just regular old silver flashaboo. I've got maybe, what, four strands, three strands? Yeah, it looks like four strands. And I'm going to tie it in so that the end of it's going back. And then I'll grab hold of it with the thread and tie over the top of it and extend all of them to the bend. So now I've doubled it to where there's eight total strands of flash. Okay, now we have the flash in place. Now I'm going to add some marabou. So just black marabou, just any strong black marabou works great. This is nature's spirit. And rather than using the tips of the marabou feather, a lot of buggers are tied by pulling the tips down like that. I'm actually going to pull off of the sides of the marabou. This makes for a longer, a uh, little more easily flowing tail. gives you a lot of motion. So I'm going to peel some off both sides and even the tips up a little. They don't have to be perfect, but something along the lines of that. So they've got a little natural taper. And then instead of doing the, the tail the same length as the shank, like you normally would on a 2x or 3x long hook, I'm going to do the tail maybe two and a half to three times the length of the shank. So it's going to be quite long. I'm just going to capture that marabou with the thread. Hold it in place. Get rid of these butt ends. And then I can clean that up a little bit and really latch those down. Now the next question I get often on this fly is, doesn't the tail foul on you a lot? And the answer is yes if you leave it tight about there. But if you tie it down the shank just a little bit, tie it actually further than you think you should to where it gets just barely onto the bend, it's going to be angling down a little bit when you first get it done. It'll look something like that. And to the, uh, the trained eye, it's going to look like a poorly tied fly, but it's a, a very well designed fishing fly. So not made to uh, impress your friends in the fly box but more made to impress the trout on the, on the lake or the river, if, if the, as the case may be. So we've got it tied down just a little bit. When you tie it down that shank, it just doesn't foul very often. I don't know why that works that way. If somebody knows, maybe you could call us at the shop and tell me. I just know that it does work. Okay, next up, I've just got some 7X tippet. Um, I'm gonna wrap this over the top and I'm gonna use this to capture the hackle at the end of the fly. So I've got it tied along the side of the hook all the way down to the tail. I'll catch it in my material clip here. Next up, we'll add the body. This is a, a silver humongous, so we're using silver tinsel chenille. Um, you could also do a gold version, so you just do everything the same except you use gold flashaboo, gold bead, and gold uh, chenille for the body. 
but the silver one for me has been a little more consistent of a producer in some of our local lakes if there are perch around oddly enough I do better with the gold but generally speaking the silver is my go-to so I move the thread I tied the chenille on move the thread up to the bead just throw a, a whip finish in there to hold it in place use the rotary function here and wrap the chenille through the body oops using the vise right to the bead and then I'm going to capture it with the thread get rid of the chenille then we have our body in place and the next step is to add some oversized grizzly hackle so I've got some whiting 4b the 4b hackles are a good a good value this is a grizzly this is one of their uh, rooster saddles in grizzly and these guys are really buggy and I'm gonna make a I'm gonna use a hackle that's oversized a little bit for this size of hook okay so I've got the feather here in my hand I'm gonna pull some of the really soft fibers down to where I'm just into the more webby not the marigold looking stuff but the web part of the hackle and I'll trim it off leaving just a little nub that you can see there sometimes I even go in and trim the little tag ends a little trimmed away so they're even shorter I figure that kinda gives something for the thread to grab hold of almost like loops hooks and loops on, a, on velcro I'm gonna tie that in right behind the bead once again I'm gonna whip finish right behind the bead as well use the bobbin cradle and take this around one full turn at the head and then I'm gonna space this out a lot as I go back to try and minimize the wraps I don't want too much hackle on here I'm gonna go through well oh, what's that one two maybe two and a half total turns then I'm gonna again use the rotary function here this is not gonna look like a pretty fly for a second but I'm gonna capture the the hackle with the 7x tippet this is where a rotary vise is really handy because now I can just keep rotating it around. I'm wiggling the, the monofilament back and forth as I counter wrap the hackle. This will make this hackle really, really durable. If you've ever had hackle come off of a woolly bugger, it's probably because you didn't counter wrap it. So I counter wrapped all the way up to the bead. I even went around the bead one extra time just to give, or the thread base right behind the bead, I should say, one extra time to give my thread something extra to bind into. And I'm gonna capture it with the tying thread pull all the fibers back and the monofilament, the 7X, tie it back and then whip finish. I like to pull in these nice and tight. I'm gonna get rid of the thread first. Then I'm gonna pull this monofilament out here and see if I can cut it off nice and short. And the last step is to come in here and get rid of this extra hackle, the stem that I left, the tip of it, I should say, that's down here at the base. So I trim it off at the very back end. And then the last step is to take a comb or a brush or just this is just Velcro, anything like that, and tease these fibers out to make sure that the webbiness of them is exposed and forced back a little bit. And this fly, these are really soft. So this has a lot of motion in the water between the long tail that's you know two and a half, three times the length of the shank and the oversized hackle. This fly is just deadly. I don't know what trout think it is. Uh, maybe a minnow, maybe a leech. I don't really care as long as they want to try it. The humongous. Go give it a try. You can build it in lots of colors. Uh, don't be afraid of the long tail. It will be very, very effective.